Hello folks, it's George Leoniak and welcome to New Geometry. Today I'm super excited to be sharing an awesome video. We're going to take a look at something I haven't discussed in any of the previous videos. We're going to look at the rhombic tricontahedron stellation diagram and we're going to talk about how that relates to uh, the final stellation of it, the convex hull it produces, how it connects to some of the Archimedean solids, how it expands and connects to the other stellation diagrams. Um, we're also going to talk about the construction and making a new form that was produced through the study of this stellation diagram. Um, so join me for this video, uh, the presentation coming up. We're going to have a good time checking out a lot of neat things. So let me get the uh, screen share and let's take a look at what the rhombic tricontahedron stellation diagram looks like. And uh, let's go ahead and start here. Yeah, so um, we have the uh, stellation diagram. Now, in my other videos, if you've seen some of them, um, we have the icosahedron stellation diagram, which has 59 stellation um, forms that can be created from that diagram. And I'll show a picture of that a little later on. Uh, we also have the dodecahedron stellation diagram, and that only has uh, three, three forms that it produces. So this stellation diagram, which is 227 um, stellations, and a lot of different forms can be created from it by, you know, using certain parts of this. This is really like a cross section through the full, through many forms. And each of these little pieces that the lines are going through can be connected in various different ways using those shapes to produce the different stellations. So there's a lot of them in the rhombic triconctahedron. For those of you who are not familiar with the rhombic triconctahedron, it's an amazing form. It has 30 diamond faces, and that form is at the center of the diagram. So here's a little rhombic triconctahedron. This diagram is in twofold symmetry, so it is based on what I like to call square view. So the rhombus, one of those 30, is straight in the middle here. Here it is, this little rhombus. So that is a form. Now, it's just taking a plane of the form. And now let's say we build this gigantic structure off this one plane. So if I turned it this way, it'd be a flat line to you. But if I turn it this way, it's all just huge star. Here, right? Eight pointed star or three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pointed star. So it's got a lot of a uh, lot of stellation points within here to produce a lot of different uh, types of forms. So the uh, this this form is constructed. The root forms that make it to give it the vertices are the icosahedron and the dodecahedron. And here I've shown uh, some of the circle templates that produce the form from the three different views. The threefold view over here, which is going to give you your normal kind of hexagon look. This is going to be your fivefold, the pentagon, and the square view. We'll revisit some of those other diagrams and stellation diagrams of those, uh, the icosahedron and dodecahedron, a little later on to make some connections there. So that's the diagram. Now I have to first figure out how to draw it. And so this is one of the methods to do it. And I was really excited to find a pretty simple technique. And I have another drawing that's a little more simplified than this one to be able to pick up the lines. Uh, and it's in the uh, Phi Yantra drawing, which I have a great video on from about two years ago. The Phi Yantra universal template that contains the pyramid, platonic solids, and the human form. And I guess I'll have to now add the rhombic triconctahedron stellation diagram because in these lines that are coming out of the corners here, uh, crisscrossing, producing all sorts of great golden ratio squares and things within it. Uh, 
it just magically goes through in this circle construction, the point we need to create the circle to go ahead and produce the rest of the tricontahedron stellation diagram. And it's actually part of those main lines already, which was awesome because I've kind of been drawing it already, just didn't know where the point was to produce the rest of it. So of course, this is all based on just giant golden rhombuses. And of course, here's our smallest little golden rhombus, which is the tricontahedron at the center. So there are forms within forms of various different scales. And we're just going to keep this scale of the tricontahedron at the base. So next thing to do after that is create some beautiful art with it. And I really love these stellation diagrams to go ahead and produce uh, some colorful little segments or little places to color in. But remember, each of these pieces here are actually part of a form that we could isolate and reproduce in five-fold symmetry on each of these 30 faces. If you make this giant diagram, uh, we'll produce what's called the final stellation of the form. So just pretend that this little triconthedron down here in the center is this rhombus, and that is one face. Now we got to do this same giant shape, right, on all the other faces. And when we do that, what happens is we get the uh, final stellation. And that was the first, uh, I mean, I have drawn some other ones. I didn't know I was drawing rhombic st uh, triconthedron stellations, but this is the first one that I was working with the diagram in square view to say, let's start with the final stellation and see what it looks like. So this is uh, producible in the drawing that I showed previously and we just have to find the other vertices to go ahead and create the star bursting star points out of the uh, four. So it's actually, this was the thing, like, so it has 120 vertices, right? So if it has 120 vertices, I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and just connect the red dots here. Let's see what type of polygons come out on the convex hull of the shape. Well, what, what, what Let's go see what happens because the triconthedron stellation diagram is not too far off uh, from a familiar form that's been around a very long time, uh, an Archimedean solid, which is the great rhombi icosidodecahedron, or the also called the uh, truncated icosidodecahedron. But I like the great rhombi icosidodecahedron because it has square faces. It has the hexagon faces and the decagon faces. And this is uh, the at the, the convex hull of the stellation diagram is this Archimedean solid. And I was like, oh, well, that's very nice and handy. So let me just pull up this stellation diagram from the previous one. And then that means that the final stellation of the rhombic triconthedron diagram is an Archimedean solid. That was news to me. It took me some effort to find out that buried somewhere in one of the Wikipedia sites that describes it in this material it does say that that is the case, uh, but uh, it wasn't out front in the open. So this is the final stellation, the convex hull of our rhombic triconthedron diagram. So within this stellation diagram, within this, that means there's a lot of other forms that are within this uh, convex hull here, okay? So that's kind of brought, and this is kind of the largest of the Archimedean solids. And I have a video on how to draw the Archimedean solids from hexagon view. And uh, I'm slowly working on getting the other views for the um, Archimedean solids for pentagon view. But you can see here is the stellation diagram, the long lines that go up to pick up the edges, the long uh, star points that are radiating out to the side, they pick up these points. And if you do that, this is the thing to get with these stellation diagrams. If you do that from this little tiny triconthedron, if you do that 30 more times, this giant star all the way around, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get, basically you get the Archimedean solid 
the uh, convex hull of the um, rhombi cosi, great rhombi cosi dodecahedron. So this and this, these two, tricontahedron and the rhombi icos, great rhombi icosi dodeca, are connected with this being a very little tricontahedron in the middle of that. So very neat. That's part of how the, uh, un unbeknownst to me, how that stellation diagram connected out to a familiar form. And uh, so we're not gonna go through all these other stellations. There's 227 of them, right? And not even all of them I could find drawings of them. There's maybe about 30 or something that are commonly out there. Uh, and I have some drawings and other videos. I'll come back and revisit that as I go and explore it because what happened there on my birthday weekend uh, was getting into this discovery, which I was super duper excited about because I never realized that on the rhombi icosi dodeca, if we hold it in hexagon view, that the nonagon, the tree of light that I like to call the nonagon, it's not apparent on the form yet, but it provides the information that we need to basically do a tree of light conversion to the rhombi icosi, great rhombi icosi dodecahedron. And how we'll do that is if you notice that from this perspective, we have these uh, squares here, or they'd be square if they were flat. And we have the base and we have a base over here and we have a base over here. And that is, if this equals one, this length here across the decagon would be uh, phi squared, which would be 2.618. So we have one to phi squared. And that is exactly what you need to make. That's the hexagon, one to phi squared hexagon to basically add your root two segments around the rest to produce the nonagon. And I have, for those who are not familiar with this tree of light nonagon and the, I, I, AKA the icosahedron stellation diagram, I have a lot of videos that really go into it recently on the tree of light uh, and just how it is this amazing polygon that was always treated pretty much as a stellation diagram. And I've since then discovered many ways that it's woven into the fabric of forms hidden invisibly. And if it's not invisible, I'm just gonna do this little extension as you could see here and create it on the rhombi icosi dodecahedron. And let's see what happens because I don't know where this is gonna go, but something interesting is gonna happen because when I follow the path of the tree of light, something usually always leads to some sort of golden fruit, fruit of discovery at the end of the trail there. So as you can see, uh, this little, the, the same little diagram and light lines here is over top here. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we go ahead and go around the whole thing and let's do it and create the blue root two segments, which are gonna create the nonagon. And you can see that this is now rotated the view to square view. So there's the square right in the center. There's our hull of our form, which is the Rhombi, great rhombi icosi dodecahedron with the decagons, squares, and hexagons. And now we're adding this crisscrossing blue lines. And let's see what that produces, because now we have these nonagons and decagons kind of locking and interfusing together. And that then goes ahead to create uh, this form, when I kind of make the uh, nonagons a little bit more invisible by connecting the black little pentagons that would be created, just creating the edges and kind of making a smooth form because the crisscrossing would just basically be creating this, uh, this shape here in the middle. So there's the form, a new form of love. That's what we've been calling it. And uh, I wasn't sure what was going to happen with the new discovery here, but I had a feeling it was going to teach me a lot of new things. So, so some of the rest of this video is going to kind of go into making some connections to uh, how this is going to lead us on a new trail of discovery. But we have to do a little 
background work first because I have to build the form and see how this all works out and make sure it connects. So here's the form being built. Uh, here it is in hand. And that is a kind of, uh, this, this image here on the left is showing both of the uh, form in construction along with the Rambi Icasi, Great Rambi Icasi dodecahedron over here. The two are fitting like a glove. This was a really lucky break on my end because I didn't even decide to measure what I was making the edge lengths on this. This Rambi Icasi dodecahedron I did to a one inch scale. I just so happened to fit the things on the page and they worked out nicely to uh, pretty much fit right over top of my previous model I did. So this is it's kind of cinching in around it. And uh, I removed it, of course, to make the final, but here's the final form from the hexagon perspective. And I love the mathematics, uh, well, at least the, uh, the, the math within this in terms of the number of edges vertices and faces. We have 360 edges, which is really sweet to have such a, uh, you know, 360 degree, you know, uh, connection, three, six uh, equaling nine, 360. We have 180 vertices. We got the 180, one eight also equal nine. And we have 182 faces which are uh, not gonna equal nine, but we always have two additional faces. So this is of course gonna meet the Euler's uh, polyhedra formula. So that's uh, you know, plus or minus two uh, faces here at the end. If we add these two together would give us the edges, 180 vertices plus 182 faces minus two would give us the 360 edges. So. Very cool to kind of build a form and figure these sort of things out while I'm in the construction process. So after doing the kind of solid model like this, the next thing I wanted to, of course, discover was, is it uh, buildable with the zone tools? Because recently I discovered that I can build the nonagon quite simply with zone tools, the tree of light nonagon. And I've done some cool constructions of building the, uh, some of the core four forms that I talk about in previous videos of the uh, geometry of the cosmic mind video and the tree of light videos. Well, this here uh, could be constructed as a zone tool. So I was pretty, uh, I, was, I was thinking that this was gonna be possible to build and it does work nicely. And I made a huge model of this uh, it's bigger, almost as big as a kitchen table. And uh, it is a nice fusion of the decagon. And like I said before, here's our nonagon intersecting it. And what happens there is that the nonagons, when they come together, they come together, they create this nice little pentagon that is in about five proportion to the uh, hexagon on the other end. So you get this creation of the hexagon and pentagon along with the nonagon and decagon uh, being uh, woven into the mixture as well. So after that, I wanted to find out what the core of this was. This was a little bit of an unstable model because it didn't have any inner structure to it. So I love to find out what the inner structure is because I know that that's gonna lead me to the interconnectivity inside all these forms are not just hollow, um, like this Archimedean solid. It'd be nice on the Wikipedia site if it said, oh yeah, by the way, this is the rhombic tricontahedron stellation diagram, which is just full of a gazillion forms in there rather than just like empty space. And we just put these polygon shapes together and that was it. There's a lot more going on to this. So I wanted to figure out what was more going on to the internal structure of this, now that we've added these additional points to go ahead and create those pentagons. So I had a model pretty much built to scale and you know, looking at my drawings and then going over and putting things in there that I know will match up. And uh, here's a tricontahedron. This tricontahedron is, a, is bigger than the one that would be uh, way down in the heart of this. So that was my first test one. 
And then I wound up settling on a dodecahedron um, that is a small dodecahedron inside this, a small, small stellated dodecahedron, because that has an icosahedron kind of core to it. And where my stellation diagrams go, and I'll get to more on that later, is actually within this little center, there's a small little dodecahedron that actually stellates to create that icosahedron. That's called the great stellated dodecahedron. Way down in there, I mean, it's it's miniature. Zoom tools can't make them, and I have the long strut zoom tools making this. Uh, it's way down in there. That is going to radiate out, and I'll show you what that diagram looks like to give you the vertices of this monster <laughs> monstrous form you know, all the way out at the size, all the way out at the far vertices. So uh, we got this huge form with a core root of a tiny little dodecahedron on the inside. Um, and this is just one dodecahedron as it kind of is stellating out to get there. Here it is in the square view. Uh, and here you could see the rhombic tricontahedron it looks like it may in the rhombic tricontahedron in the middle, that little diamond in the middle. So inside that, we've got another small dodecahedron. So I just want to take a tour through the views uh, and just, you know, look at the beauty of sacred geometry um, that can be done using the simple circle techniques, <clears throat> which are all about the templates, and they provide the lines, uh, the, po the points to create the lines, and uh, using golden ratio techniques that are just built into the circle templates themselves provide all the all that's needed to just find the necessary points to kind of do the connect the dots to create these beautiful forms. Some have never been discovered before. And I love to see that the like something like this, which is new, K-N-E-W and N-E-W which we know is built off of that core hexagon, uh, decagon and square, the great Rhombi Icosi dodecahedron. Well, I wanted to see like, are these other points of the nonagons like to create this pentagon and create this structure? Are they actually like with sacred geometry or are they just like add-ins, you know, like do they flow with the diagram? And yeah, they totally flow with the diagram. I mean, they're totally built in. I don't have to work too hard at all to discover the connections of how everything's meant to be just picking up points and looking at the cross sections. And we're going to talk about this cross section here in just a moment. This, this line right here. So when I look at this from the side, I know I've got a pentagon. So I'm looking through decagon, pentagon, icosagon slices all the way along this edge. If I'm looking this way, I'm looking all at something from hexagon perspective. And then of course, flat to us is square. So here is uh, the hexagon view. And here I've got to use the flower of life circle template fused with golden ratio circles. And once again, um, if we go back just quickly, we'll see that this is built off of the same template that I used to draw the uh, Rhombi Icosi dodecahedron. So now I was wondering, well, okay, are these nonagon points, how are they gonna show up? Are they gonna easily be in here? Or is this gonna be something that just doesn't like fit? Like, was it? in there at all. And that's what's important about these circle templates. And if we just look at like uh, books or Wikipedia sites that just show you nothing with circle templates, you don't know how you can build off of this really. Like you don't know how this nonagon integrates. You can't really connect anything to it because it's the circle template that's underneath the form that generates our, at least, from a hand-drawn perspective or my ability to draw it rather than just programming it with mathematical equations, but approaching it like with my skill set as a geometer, like how the circle template's gonna guide the whole form and design. And it's gonna keep the proportions uh, maintained when we move from one form to a, one view to another like this. And it's gonna show how the forms are interrelated. So this is the same template of the hexagon template that I showed you previously, 
And yes, there are those little pentagons, which we need to get. And that is going to show the crisscrossing of the nonagon faces, which would be going from here to here to here. Uh, I don't draw the nonagons in this. I haven't done it, but I don't need to because I just wanted the outside of the form to look like the uh, one in hand here. So then we went to Pentagon view. So those are going to be like the three major views that I like to kind of give a form, especially a new form that I've never, uh, that, that has no drawings associated with it, that I'll go through and kind of see how can I draw it from all these perspectives because each one of them is gonna give me a more well-rounded uh, perspective on a kind of more unified view of the form because there are all sorts of hidden ratios and things to discover about the circle template and the relationship to the lines through each view. So here is, once again, all the black lines. Well, that is how to draw the rhombi icosi dodecahedron, the black. And then this was really nice, the blue lines and the uh, gold lines there. They just picked up because they are automatically within the golden proportion layout of the circle template, like I was mentioning. Okay, so from this perspective, I was mentioning a little bit before, and I think it's almost easier to see in square view, because I want you to get a sense of how to look at this really quickly, is as I draw a line here with my cursor, starting at this point, in it's straight line, it goes through that pentagon, so that's actually an edge there, so we're going to include that as an edge. We keep going, 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 going. Oh, that's total flat plane going across cross section, almost like a lid. I could flip that whole little top off this and then close it back up. And that's an acosagon. That's 20 sides. So from this perspective, it is a little bit more tricky to see, but it's going to go around here. In fact, let, maybe this is an easier way to look at it here. I have this slide set up. I've laid this icosagon over top of uh, the same image we were just looking at on the right. And essentially from the smaller forms kind of at the core of this, which we haven't got to yet because I'm kind of now working my way from the outside in, right? So I'm like, okay, I've got this form. I wanna know what's inside that. And I have a feeling that that icosagon that I'm showing you, that line, if I rotate this around in my hands, that line never changes. If I figure out how to create a star out of that icosagon, well, maybe it will create some form inside here that will, like, it will create a face down in here that will give me some sort of relationship to getting into the core of the form. So I got to work from the outside of this hollow structure, which is, you know, essentially this uh, back inward. So we have this acosagon going around here, 20 sides, and down in here, uh, I built it out of zone tools too, so it'll be a little easier to see. So here's the icosagon. These, are, these would have edges going along. Zone tool doesn't make one that is the appropriate edge length to make that connection. But uh, so as I crisscross all these lines, all these points are all something. They're, they're like, they're all other forms that are just, that I built some of them or drew some of them. But this one, this is the one I wanted to know. I wanted to know uh, which form is this because this is the line that's, and zone tool can't reconnect through this way. Uh, I needed a smaller piece and I didn't have that piece available, but and it, nevertheless, we if I draw this line straight through this little guy right here, that decagon, now, who is that decagon if I do that 12 more times? What face is that going to be in a four? That's what I'm asking when I'm looking at that plane. And this was really awesome to me because here is, I've rotated the form as if it was sitting on the pentagon faces. So it's kind of like a big truncated icosahedron. So here's that, once again, here's that line that I'm talking about, the lid that you could just pull that off. And we've got this 20-sided acosagon. We're looking at it as a line. So remember, this is totally flat to you. Looks like a line. Back here, if I flip it and we look at the top of the pentagon view again, now I'm looking at this, right? And now when I sandwich the form in between the top and the bottom, 
right? Here's the top of it. Here's the bottom of it. Oh, well, that's the decagon here. Oh, if I do that on all these other 12 faces, right? These 12 icosigons around this, that's what it creates. So that's essentially what I did. I crisscrossed those stars, 20 icosigon through all these, through all these face planes to go ahead and give me the points to do a connect the job, connect the dots. So this is like, I'm really on the edge of my seat here in terms of uh, like, what's going to happen? I don't know. It's like a mystery going about to be revealed to me of some form is going to emerge and I don't know what it is. And it turns out to be this form, which I talked about maybe five or six videos ago in the uh, new golden Merkaba video. And I'll have a few slides on that in a sec, but this was an this amazing form. I didn't know what it was when I discovered it kind of coming from the inside going out. Now I've kind of met in the middle because when I discovered this, I started with a little cube in the middle and grew it out to this. And for this form, I started on the outside and worked my way in. So this is beyond the new golden Merkaba. And it's if you go ahead around these decagons and you do this awesome stellation off of these decagons, it will go ahead and give you an icosagon way out here that's going to produce the outside structure of this form. It's going to pick up every single vertice you need. And if you do that all the way around off of these decagons, uh, then you'll go ahead and you'll basically reproduce this form. It's already been built into this. And of course, this form, actually, I thought it was something that wasn't out there, but this turned out to be a truncated dodeca dodecahedron and it has uh and that this is like the convex hull of that and this has got golden rectangles decagons and golden hexagon faces and this one um let's just revisit some of the uh images from that previous slideshow on the new golden merkaba go ahead and check it out uh, this is, I'll talk about how it's the Golden Merkaba or how there are five in here, because I basically took the Golden Merkaba and rotated it around into icosahedral symmetry, and that produced the vertices of this. And uh, this was a great drawing because it really used everything I used in the Golden Seed of Life to go ahead and draw every single line through there to go ahead and pick up the... Uh, uh, golden rectangles, golden hexagons, and decagons. And here, of course, is the golden hexagon right at the center. So uh, let's let me move my slides down here. The next one is, hold on, it's a little slow. Come on. Uh, Stay on the wrong slide. Sorry. This is the one I want. <laughs> Come on. Okay, here we are. Uh, a new level of icosahedral symmetry. So this, I just am overviewing um, the construction of how this form was created. The uh, uh, truncated dodeca dodecahedron hull. Uh, uh, Nancy Benaroff, she made this at a camp with the kids. She made a huge one, a geometer. She made this huge one, uh, and the kids love to call this God's ball. They love throwing it around, playing all sorts of games with it. It was gigantic. Uh, so this one was constructed out of this form. I'd suggest just going to check out this video because basically I constructed this from one Merkaba, and I extended it out into the Tree of Life to create this outline of this form here. And then I rotated that around and the icosahedral symmetry would look like this, which looks pretty pretty messy, but I could figure out how to connect the vertices and these are the great outlines to give me structure of the form here. This is the uh, kind of how the one of the golden Merkabas, which is this one here, these are the tetrahedrons in square view or the, the triangles, which all few come together. And what I did was that tree of light again around each of those. And I said, well, what's going to happen if I do that around every tetrahedron and I make this nonagon around it? And then I just join it together in this way. And this is what I came up with. 
And then I rotated that around in icosahedral symmetry, excuse me, and then it came up with this. And now this is going to go ahead and send out those decagon, uh, icosagons, and now all of a sudden I get this. It's just like super all interconnected, and it's super cool to see all those awesome relationships when they play out like that. And to see the mystery kind of like come back to something that I wasn't sure I was going to come back to for a little while, uh, all interconnected and related through this beautiful interconnection of the sacred geometry through these internal planes. So uh, it's all connecting back to that rhombic triconohedron. Now remember, that's the core of this, and that's the core of that stellation diagram, which I showed you before. I know we kind of jumped a little further away from the stellation diagram. We're going to return to those stellation diagrams in a minute. But this is uh, rhombic triconohedron is the compound of the icosahedron and dodecahedron, these two creating this one, because these two edges cross all the way around 30 times, the magic number, the 30. They crossing 30 times and they give us the 30 faces like so. And that will go ahead and produce this one. So uh, we've got the smallest within and without, but there's there's a lot going on in between all of these. And we're, you know, I, I know some of them, I'm going to show you a few of the things that are going on, but more, more in our, can be found. Um, but I wanted to start to explore some of the other planes and I wanted to just see what's going on. How is this gonna all work out basically was I, I was asking myself, it's like, okay, well that works with the decagon face, but now let's go ahead and do it with the hexagon, right? So if I send the hexagon edges out, uh, what's gonna happen with those, right? So basically from these hexagon edges, the short edges, if I extend the lines all the way out, they'll go out and hit the points on the form again. And if we did that all the way around these hexagons, we'd reproduce the same form, um, but we'd be doing it with a larger golden hexagon. So this blue dotted uh, golden hexagon really tilted to you right now because it's in the cross section of the form, so it's slanting away. It's connected to that red golden hexagon at the top. There's the little red golden hexagon. There is the big blue uh, black outline here of the same uh, rec uh, golden rectangle, uh, golden hexagon now flayed out flat. So I'm figuring out the inner structure and stellation diagrams, figuring out how one thing leads to another and how those outer vertices are connected, not only through the decagon faces, but also through the hexagon face. because I really am interested in these stellation diagrams. And these are gonna get even core, more core into the form, like at a deeper level than what I was just showing you, because right now we're gonna go from the previous image and we're looking at the, uh, we're looking at pretty much this plane on the, going across here on the icosagon. We're going to go way into this interior and we're going to pick up points in here and figure out the planes and that that's what these stellation diagrams are here so there's these three major stellation diagrams which are the dodecahedron stellation diagram the icosahedron and this rhombic tricontahedron stellation diagram in fact i have enhanced rhombic and i'll tell you what that means in a sec but really all these stellation diagrams are enhanced because this is, this is going to be hard for you to see, but way at the center of this, this little golden, and in fact, my cursor is almost the whole size of it, a little golden dodecahedron. And that is the regular dodecahedron in the regular stellation diagram. And that only stellates out to here, right? So it just goes out to about here. And that's it. That's as far as the stellation diagram goes. And what this form had me do was go well past our endpoint for the stellation diagram to basically do a whole nother star <laughs> over top of that stellation diagram and even extend those edges further because actually this line way out here before I get to the tip of the black pentagon there this line this line here the short little black line that is actually creating this form so 
This is the little dodecahedron I mentioned way back at the beginning of the video. There's a small dodecahedron when I was saying way back over here when I was showing you these forms. I was like, yeah, yeah, way in there, way inside this, there's this little tiny dodecahedron and that stellates out to give you these points. So even smaller than zone tools can make, here is way down in there. Now we're looking at that stellation diagram and we're looking at how that will send out points through all this interconnected geometry. We're passing through a lot of other forms. I'm gonna highlight a few other ones from the square view now, I want to make a point that I was trying to show with this is these three stellation diagrams, at least the interior here, these are all the same. This red outline is the same red outline of this form right here that I showed previously. It's just from a different view. So this is the portion of like a pentagon version, a square version, and the uh, icosahedron stellation diagram. So all these stellation diagrams are really of the same internal form. It's just what layer slice you're looking through uh, uh, to get the vertices to connect, but all of them are connected. So these, uh, and this is where the regular stellation diagram ends. And this is where the form goes out to creating these vertices way out over here for the form. Okay, so I just want to cut, touch this. Why is this an enhanced rhombic tricontahedron stellation diagram? Well, previously I showed you an image of the stellation diagram that just looked like this. And what this form had me do was rotate the whole diagram, which actually eight of the vertices are gonna remain the same, but you're gonna get an additional uh, four vertices that are not part of the original stellation diagram because we actually need uh, 16 points all the way around here to create this. And that's why I had to rotate it was to create the 16 points. And that then gives us all the vertices and it gives us some other additional information inside. Now let's go take a look at this enhanced rhombic tricontahedron because I want to show you some of the other forms that are going to show up. But first, let's go back and see how it's connecting to that compound of the five golden Merkaba, which is also the truncated dodeca dodecahedron convex hull. Now, right now I've got that enhanced outline over top. You could see that it's giving me the vertices all the way around the outside, the key locations we need. There's that little tiny tricontahedron in the middle. And we're gonna see a red outline here that's actually going across this golden hexagon face. It's part of this decagon over here, and it's gonna go around. So I'm gonna pull this to the side. And that is gonna give you the outline of the compound five Merc golden Merkaba. Those are the edges and there they are in the diagram. They're all given at the precise points you need in the crisscrossings of lines in that stellation diagram. That is uh, the enhanced version of this little crisscross line section in that awesome looking circle temp in the awesome looking uh, line pattern there. Uh, that gives us that. There's the tricontahedron at the middle. So let's go ahead and take a look at another form that I was super excited about to see in here because we're only going to do a couple here. I think it's the last one. So what now I want you to focus on the blue lines. Okay, now this is the actual true edge of the form. This is like a line that's going lengthwise through it to just make it look like a big polygon here. Now, if I pull that aside, it will produce I guess I'm pulling the whole big thing and the other one will be underneath. Oh, whoops, they're still grouped. Let me ungroup it, undo and ungroup. Okay, let's pull that over there. And okay, now there is the uh, stellation diagram and how it goes ahead and produces these edges which are just uh, a couple that are part of the great rhombi icosi dodecahedron. Now, like it's just a couple, but the key thing is, is if you do that 30 times, just these four lines all the way around, you'll pr produce the great rhombi icosi dodecahedron. Now, the great rhombi icosi dodecahedron is another Archimedean solid, 
And as of this point, I've never seen a stellation diagram of how to produce this. And now we are looking at one in the rhombic tricontahedron stellation diagram. And that produces squares, triangles, and pentagons, all with equal edge length. This is essentially a zone ball, the zone tools that I would build the big structures out of. That's essentially what the ball is made of is this. And there it is, is inside. It's at this next stellation point out here. It's uh, on our way out as we're increasingly getting larger and larger forms. So that's great. We got another Archimedean solid. We actually have both of the icosid do great rhombi and small rhombi icosid dodecahedron, let's call it. We got both of these all in the stellation diagram. And the other cool thing is that that great rhombi icosid dodecahedron, that shows up right here at the tip of the yellow star. It's going past the, uh, the regular dodecahedron stellation diagram. If you extend those lines out to go ahead to this point and you rotate that around into following the uh, icosahedral symmetry, you're gonna produce this. And that's why it's awesome when we go beyond the limits of the dodecahedron stellation diagram to see what else is beyond at these other vertices. Well, that this is what this expansion of this form is, is uh, had me do in this discovery process. So there are these two, uh, great rhombi icosi dodecahedron. And, okay, so now uh, those are the only two forms that we've got. So far we got these two Ar Archimedean solids that showed up in there. And we are now going to uh, do something that I wanted to check out because I thought it was gonna be interesting is I saw, because that was like this form was kind of like stopping the Pentagon from completing itself, right? There's this big black Pentagon that I have drawn here now. And there was just like, it's truncated off at the end. It's just this little tip was cut off. And that's, if we cut that little tip off and we rotate that around, that will give us this form. But I was like, well, what's that form gonna be, right? And I was like, let me build that out and see what happens. So I went and constructed the form and this is what it looks like. Triangles, great. Pentagons, great. Oh, okay, we have, oh, wait, it's not a square. It's not a regular square. These edges aren't equal anymore because it certainly looked like a rhombi icosi dodecahedron, right? But that's gotta be a regular square. Oh no, what's that? Hmm. Maybe it's nothing. Like did something, is that really gonna be nothing? Has this got no relationship to anything? I mean, it does have a relationship to the form, but it was quite surprising me because this is like really, it's kind of like taking it to the final stellation, right? Like here's your little dodecahedron, this little pentagon. And now I've got all these stars, extending the stars out. And now I'm gonna create this pentagon at the end here of that whole process. And I was like, this is gonna be good. Let's see what happens. And I was like, dang, there's nothing there, right? So. Let's see what happens. I was like, well, let me just connect the midpoints across, right? And yeah, big note, right? This was amazing to me because on the midpoints of the pentagons and across that, uh, across the, uh, uh, that rectangle in the middle, oh, that creates all equal edge lengths. And if I do that all the way around, what? I produce perfect hexagons and perfect pentagons? No way, that's the truncated icosahedron with regular ed, that's with the regular edges. Cause I've done a lot of drawings of the uh, truncated icosahedron with golden hexagon faces. They're so much easier to draw, but this equal edged one is really hard. I mean, I have a draw, I've never even drawn it in pentagon view before. But now I've drawn it in square view easily because it's in the diagram here. I mean, it's in this setup of how to draw it. And it's right in the uh, stellation diagram when we look back here. 
uh, we'll, we'll, we could go and uh, figure out the vertices to go ahead and draw this in square view, but I've never drawn a pentagon view. I have drawn a hexagon view and it was a tricky drawing to do. This of course is the uh, buckyball, right? And it is uh, carbon 60, right? So these are some things you could look up to do some more research on carbon 60 and the buckyball, Buckminster Fuller's buckyball. But that has got uh, the perfect hexagons, perfect pentagons in terms of their edge lengths being equal in terms of perfect. I mean, the golden ratio ones are equally as perfect in my opinion. They just don't have equal edge lengths, but they're in golden proportion. So that form, which has got these uh, rectangles that are not squares, gave me the access to the uh, C60 uh, icosahedron. And that was not all, because this was the thing that really got me. This was super interesting. Take a look at this pentagon inside the pentagon of that, right? So this is the pentagon of the new form of love, right? This, this form here, this pentagon, that's right in here, right? And basically, let's go ahead and take a look at that hexagons. Oh, there's the black hexagon on the form below it, right, within it. And there's the blue hexagon. Does all that work out? I mean, like, is one in the other? And yes, yes, one is in the other. The, a new form, the new form of love is inside. It's kissing the faces of the icosahedron, truncated icosahedron, in an amazing the golden proportion type of way. So if I just draw this lines across here to create a star inside of the truncated icosahedron, if you just did stars on all those faces, you create that pentagon, that's the new form of love. If this is golden proportion hexagon to the one below it, this essentially is a, this is a draw, this is basically a drawing of the uh, tricontahedron, which we do over and over again, two golden proportioned hexagons is the same thing as two golden proportioned um, circles. So this is just a, another view, uh, I mean, another uh, golden proportion hexagon with inside. All you have to do is just connect the dots between those two and you've created this form. It's right inside this Archimedean solid by just golden proportion hexagon and the smaller pentagon with inside. That blew me away because it's kissing the faces of the other, one, one's kissing the faces of this icosahedron of the pentagons and hexagons with equal edge lengths. That was awesome. Here it is looking at an edge view, I mean a hexagon view, and same thing, there's the hexagon. So these are two golden proportion circles, remember? So, uh, or two hexagons, which could have two golden circles around that. And of course, all you need to do for this one is go ahead and just draw stars on the uh, on those pentagon faces. So the, how I did this drawing was I went to my Archimedean solid drawing of this from this view, and I just drew in the properly proportioned pentagons and hexagons because it was all in the information of the drawing, just like that. It's already there. I just never drew a star in those, which I don't know why I wouldn't have because it's no different than just drawing stars on this and coming up with five cubes of your dodecahedron, right? The little where they crisscross, they make that pentagon in the middle, which turns out to be, uh, now I'm going a little off track now, and that forms over there, but that's a compound of five cube octahedron. Everything's connected in this internal geometry, forms leading to forms within forms. All these lines mean something to something else within it. And you might never know when one of them is going to reveal itself and you've made a KNEW discovery just like that. But the fun thing I really liked about this, as I mentioned before, that I never had drawn before the view of the uh, truncated icosidodecahedron with all the edge lengths equal, because the golden hexagon ones are relatively easy with the golden proportion segments. But once you normalize the pentagon to the hexagon edge length, it makes it a very complicated drawing actually. 
And because of the discoveries that I made of the other forms, I could go back and work my way to recreate the Pentagon view of the truncated icosidodecahedron, which can be done hand-drawn, which is a very cool thing to do uh, when you know, you're not relying on just looking at computer created images of it that uh, we go see on Wikipedia sites or anywhere else. So you can have a real tactile experience of connecting to this form by having this technique of doing this. So I'll probably draw this with some of the apprentices at some point or a uh, Patreon or something like that. So uh, this all happened on my birthday weekend, pretty much. Everything I showed you in this video was pretty much intuited on an awesome birthday weekend. And here we are with some new forms of love, uh, showing off the two forms we made. We did the beautiful uh, drawing together. Here's Nancy Benroff. I showed you some of her work earlier. Of uh, Here's a draw one of the drawings we did. Uh, it was this one we did then, and all this information was pretty much just came pretty much in a flash over the birthday weekend celebration that weekend, celebrating with some new forms of love. It was great to build those forms together and uh, looking forward to uh, sharing some time and connecting with you. If you are interested in diving deeper into new geometry, Please uh, reach out and contact, check out the new geometry courses. There's a lot of courses already on there. A great intro one, I think, right now is the Way of Sacred Geometry or the Platonic Solids course, just getting working with the compass. I'm teaching my master classes right now on the core four forms, which are also based on the Tree of Light. So there's just a lot of, uh, lot of ways to explore, and it can take you really far in sacred geometry and starting to make a lot of these connections There'll probably be a whole masterclass coming up on the rhombic tricontahedron installation diagrams. And of course, almost everything in this video could be a complete masterclass. So please come and check out some of those offerings. Patreon, we're going to actually draw the rhombic tricontahedron installation. So check out the New Geometry Patreon. We'll be drawing that tomorrow. But if you go ahead and become a member on Patreon, you could uh, get that recording of that if you're not going to sign up right away or if you missed the, this uh, right after this video. So let me just show the uh, form again in uh, life size here, or not life size, life size to me, but uh, larger on your screen. So there it is. Actually, uh, these are the crisscrossing edges on the form. So if I hold it in Pentagon view, let me stop the glare there. There we go. You can make out, follow the green to blue, to green, to blue, to green, to blue, back to the center point. There's your nonagon. And remember, it's uh, all of it is this. This is the uh, uh, junkie, the, uh, <laughs> the stellation diagram of the rhombic tricontahedron. Um, and the other neat thing, just to recap, those Archimedean solids, three of them made appearances uh, through the stellation diagrams of working through those like this. And those were cool. Just a couple other videos I would just say, give a shout out to again. Go ahead and check out the uh, Golden Merkaba video to learn more about that. And the Phi Yantra from a couple years ago. Fantastic video. Uh, that was really has one of the key drawings to really unlock the golden ratio understanding for me to continue to um, integrate it into other circle templates and learn more about them really came through the study of the Phiantra from the square view drawing. So thanks again for joining me. Uh, I encourage you to go join at least the New Geometers Facebook group. It's got over 4,000 members in there. Great community. Lots of great drawings and posts there. So until next time, thanks for joining me. Much love and appreciation, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Have a great day.